is that usually it's, it's well covered in, in uh, wax, but these are just wax. I just took them out ahead of time because they're real tricky to get on with. But representing the five wounds of Jesus. And that when that is done, the fire is going to be done. God has a wonderful way of doing things because we had a candle, a pastel candle design that we really liked. And then um, we got it real early one year, and no one opened the box until the day before we needed it, and it was the wrong candle. <laughs> so we decided we liked this one better, so we kept it. <laughs> Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. And let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this fire, we pray and grant that by these Paschal mysteries we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that, the minds, that with minds made pure we may attain the festivities of ending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in darkness, rise in glory, dispel the darkness of our minds and hearts. Now again, the uh, RCIA candidates are going to follow Deacon Terry and the servers, and, and, and me in first, and then all are welcome to follow afterwards. So if we can help clear a path. Those in the church can stand, please. Mm -hmm. 
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. The light of Christ Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud a mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. 
ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of His glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. The Lord be with you, Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, His Son, His only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wipe clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is a night, this is night. when once you led our forebears Israel's children from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is a night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is a night, is a night that with a peep that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is a night, this is a night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain if he had not been green. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes fault away restores lost innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners. O oh, truly blessed night when things of heaven are wed to those of earth 
and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of beasts, and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Re receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ, your Son, who, coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. this time to very carefully and slowly blow out your candles and leave them upright for a little while. Let them the wax cool. Ushers will be coming down the center aisles of each section with baskets. So when you see them uh, approach the, your pew, pass them your candles to the center. My brothers and sisters, now we have begun our solemn vigil, and we let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Let us be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was, God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other, and so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. 
God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears its fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the, earth, of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man as an image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made. He found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
greater your works, in wisdom you made them all. Rich is the earth and filled with your life, bless the Lord, oh bless my soul. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, you are wonderful in the ordering of all your works. May those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous in the world's creation in the beginning except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff, and hand outreached over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites might pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all of his army, his chariots, and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading the Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it became between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed, without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong, with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly move. When the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians, <clears throat> then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the, toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. 
Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw that the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God.
Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of the wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people, grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith may be reborn by partaking of your Spirit through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there, till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Draw water joyfully. From the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully. From the springs of salvation. God indeed is my Savior, I am confident and fearless, my courage is the Lord, for God has been my Savior. You will draw water joyfully, from the springs of salvation. Proclaim God's name to the nations, tell the world of God's works. Praise the Lord, all you people, how glorious is God's name. You will draw water joyfully from 
the springs of salvation. Sing the wonders God's works, make them known in every land. O people of Zion, shout, the Holy One is among you. You will draw water joyfully, from the springs of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them, because of the blood that they poured out on the ground, and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name. Because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and a place, a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statues, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of the human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what has become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please remain standing. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. You. We give you praise for your 
Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all, As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It all started with Mary of Magdala. This year we are invited to proclaim either St. Mark or St. John's resurrection stories. Now, you may have noticed already they're very different from the stories that you heard earlier in the week. On Sunday we heard the Passion according to St. Mark. Friday the Passion according to St. John. And those are very long, very detailed stories about the pain and suffering and rejection Jesus endured on the way to the cross. And they ended with Jesus' body being placed in a tomb. The next part of the story begins with Mary of Magdala. And unlike those passion accounts, there's not a lot of details in those stories. We know that Mary and others went to the tomb early in the morning to do what people who are in mourning do, to anoint the body of Jesus. They didn't have a plan for how they would great, move the great stone that blocked the entrance to the tomb. They were simply, I suppose, lost and confused still trying to figure out what has happened, had happened. And going to the tomb just seemed to be the right thing to do. But the stone had been rolled away. Mark tells of a young man in a white robe who told the women, he has been raised, he is not here. They are told to go and tell the disciples what had happened. John's account makes it clear that Mary of Magdala didn't quite realize yet what was going on. She thought the body of Jesus had been stolen. Then Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved had to go and see for themselves, as men usually do. And we're told that Peter saw the empty tomb and discarded burial cloths, and I'm sure something began to happen. And we're told the other disciple, whom we believe is John, saw and believed. Now in the early weeks of Easter, 
we will hear other stories of encounters with the risen Christ himself. Again, there won't be a lot of details, but we'll learn of those who see and believe. What seems very clear again is it all starts with Mary of Magdala. She was the first to go out and tell that something had happened with Jesus. She was still figuring it all out. Now, there are many good people like Bishop Robert Barron. He's got a whole, whole series of talks on the evidence of the resurrection, on why the story must be true, and there's some fascinating details in his talks and in his writings I commend you to those. However, ultimately, the resurrection cannot be proven. It's a matter of faith. Like Mary and Peter and John and others, we have to see and then choose to believe. Now, many of you are aware that we've had an unusually large number of funerals since 2024 began. And I've been spending a lot of time with people who are wandering about like Mary Magdalene and others who are doing what they're supposed to be doing at a time like that, trying to make sense out of what has happened to them. And I know what I believe, but I can only invite them to come to the same faith. That those we love are not lost. As followers of Jesus, death is not the end, nor the end for us. No tomb could hold him, no tomb could hold, can hold us. And so I ask you, who invited you here today? For many of us, that invitation came long ago through parents and grandparents and generations of believers. For Lon and Dan, our two catechumens, who will be baptized in about 10 minutes. Where did you, how did you receive that invitation? I know you've been exploring that very much through people who love you too, I know. Now for some of us here, maybe this is a night or been a year when we're struggling a bit. Maybe we're a little lost in our faith. But you're here, and that's a good start. I assure you that these days, again, there are all kinds of books and videos and podcasts and all such things that can tell you all kinds of things about what you should believe and why you should believe it. But it's a choice you have to make for Jesus And thanks be to God, we're invited to faith, as I said, by many different people in many different ways, asked to make that choice. It's been happening since Mary of Magdala went running from the tomb. However, your life will be changed forever when you make that choice to believe that Jesus has been raised from the dead, that those who believe in him will not die but we'll have new life. And then you go out like Mary and invite others to come and see and believe in the risen Lord who has saved us. I now invite Dan Dalton and Lon Tran, along with your sponsors, to come forward to the center aisle. Dearly beloved, with one heart and soul, let us pray, let us by our prayers come to the aid of our brother and sister in their blessed hope, 
so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them his merciful help. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the A 
Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth in you in the fount, fount of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your might, almighty power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit at the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and the beginning of virtue, O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry-shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teaching all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May the water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from the squalor of the life of old, may be find worthy to rise in the new life of the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into his death may rise again to new life in him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And my friends, as we are about to baptize, we are all called to remember our own promises of baptism. I think you know now how, how it goes. We're not just going to say, I do, to each of these questions. We are going to sing, certainly, Lord, certainly, Lord, certainly, 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 Lord. Reject old Satan and all his words and all his empty promises. He is the father of sin, he is the prince of darkness. You reject old Satan. believe in God, the Father Almighty, created heaven and earth. You believe in Jesus, God's only Son, of the Virgin Mary. Bowed his head died, but he rose on Easter. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. You believe in Jesus. God's Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, is a communion of saints. Can God forgive sin? Can God raise the dead? Can God give life everlasting?
church, this is our faith. We are proud to profess it in Jesus Christ. Oh, certainly, certainly. Oh, certainly, certainly. This is our faith, certainly, Lord. I now call Lon Kim Tron and Daniel Joseph Dalton to baptism. Lon. Lon Kim Tron, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Christ, you have been baptized. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Dan's anxious, I love this. <laughs> Daniel Joseph Dalton, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You have been baptized. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Dan and Lon, you have become new creations and have clothed yourself in Christ. May this white garment be assigned to you of your Christian dignity with your family and your friends to help you by their good words and their good example. Bring that dignity unstained one day into the everlasting life of heaven. I invite one of the sponsors to please come forward to take the candle for each of the candidates, the catechumens, or newly baptized, I should say. Dan and Lon, receive the light of Christ. Enlightened by Christ, may you walk always as children of the light and persevering in the faith. May you run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. Now I invite you to take your rightful place among us and we will sprinkle all of God's people gathered here with the new Easter water as a reminder of that day when we were baptized and promised to follow Jesus faithfully. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we've been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And now may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
water we will gather at the water. Please be seated. The newly baptized sponsors can blow out the candle at this time. <laughs> I now invite Micah Richter, Malin Moore, and Brooke Schirmerhorn, along with their sponsors, to come forward to the top of the stairs to profess their faith. Micah, Malin, and Brooke. Of your free will, you have asked to be received into full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to profess the Catholic faith in the presence of this community. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table, the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's community. Unity. Micah, Malin, and Brooke, the Lord receives you into the Holy Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his holy family. Welcome. I now invite Dan and Lan to join us for the Sacrament of Confirmation. Dan and Lon and Micah and Malin and Brooke, by your baptism, you were all reborn, born again in Christ, and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ, and help you to be a witness to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends in Christ, people of St. Michael's, I invite you to stand at this time. Let us pray together to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint, anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and their guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of reverence and knowledge. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Faustina, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. John Paul II, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Mary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brooke, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Daniel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Now I invite us to pray, continue to pray for these newly welcomed into the church and for the needs of all the world. While we're doing that, if there are any here who are going to be confirmed, that's the same sweet-smelling oil the Archbishop just blessed with the whole archdiocese. These guys got it first, but you're coming soon. So I hope you're listening carefully to those gifts of the Holy Spirit that you'll receive in the fullness at your confirmation, including Sawyer back there who's grinning from ear to ear. For the church, that we will continue to be instruments of Christ's light for all who have lived in darkness, hope for all who know pain, and love for all who have been forgotten, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an end to war and violence, particularly in the Holy Land and Ukraine, that God will bring forth a springtime of peace so that all people may live in safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the rebirth of the human community, that Christ's victory may conquer the powers of death, racism, poverty, addiction, and disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are oppressed and burdened, that God will give them strength and open new channels of help and assistance for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and for those who have completed their Christian initiation, may they be faithful disciples of Jesus and keep the light of Christ burning in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or homebound, And for those who are struggling emotionally, financially, or unemployed, may the risen Christ visit them with healing power and new hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, including those who have recently died, John Leggett, and for the deceased members of the Clarence Mulkin family for whom this Mass is offered, may they share in the resurrection with all the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for always listening to us as we cry out to you. Grant what we truly need this day through Christ our Lord. Let us show a sign of support for our newest members. And I invite you to take your place among us, and very soon you will be coming to receive the Lord and Holy Communion. Let us sing Alleluia is our song. You'll find it on the back page of the worship aid.
Pray, my friends, in my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what was begun in Paschal, the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all on this Easter day to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rise of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Michael and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to sing, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Lord Jesus be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And the newly initiated will be coming forward first for a Holy Communion and then the rest of the congregation. Our communion song is New Creation. You'll find it in the worship aid.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our final blessing, as always, just some word of thanks. In these three great days, I say with, uh, after nine years with you, this is my ninth Holy Week, um, I, always, I just look out to see the usual suspects out there. Those, I, I think I said last night, or maybe it was Thursday night, those, so many who I've watched grow up, always new members coming in. Uh, so many of you who just day in, day out, listen to the Lord's call and keep this community of faith alive and have done so since the beginning of St. Peter's, at least, in 1860. Uh, faith has been in here in our backyard for a long time, so I'm grateful for all of you. But I do want to thank, uh, in particular, uh, first of all, Deacon Terry and all of our sponsors and all involved in bringing these wonderful people to the Lord's table today. There's a lot of preparation that goes into helping them discern when the time is right and to come with such great smiles on their faces. They can just see the power of the Lord is working in their lives. So Deacon Terry, to you and all involved in our uh, inviting those in, thank you and if you have never been baptized, or if there's someone you know who hasn't been, or maybe you were baptized either in the Catholic Church or another church, but never received confirmation, your first Holy Communion, this is the guy to talk to. He'd love to tell you more about that. And of course, we're only, we're only beginning our season of celebrating the sacraments, as I talked about earlier. Confirmation is just around the corner, first Holy Communion. Keep praying for those little ones. I am so grateful for all the people who have been running around back there to make everything work and get here about two hours before we start. To all of our sacristans, all, our, uh, all who are involved in decorating church, getting everything ready and helping us throughout Mass. To our excellent servers, I'm great, grateful to have our seminarian, Noah Oram, back with us. The last two nights he was serving for the Archbishop, but he said he would do it for me. For one night here, so I, we're grateful to have him here and wish our and promise our prayers as you continue your discernment toward the priesthood. We also have some of my veteran servers here with us uh, tonight, uh, Juliana and Brinley, and also Finley, who happened to uh, was was very much on duty because he noticed we forgot to put something very important out, and that is the job of the server to have an eye open. So. Thank you, servers, for your hard work, to our lectors who did everything so well, um, all of our other ministers who helped day in and day out, our ushers who are here with us, and finally, above all, our ministers of music. It has been a glorious Holy Week. We'll continue tomorrow morning, but to all of our musicians, thank you so much, our choir and all of our instrumentalists. Thank you. Let's show a sign of our support. To Angie, who pulls it all together, and um, <laughs> part of it was, you know, she, when you're celebrating Christmas, she's already planning Holy Week, <laughs> and there have been 25 funerals, since, and that, that takes a lot of her time and everything else, but she gets it all done, puts it all together so gloriously, and brings out the best and so many people here. So Angie, thank you so much for all you do. <laughs> and to Lauren hiding in the back there, our, our liturgist, and again to Deacon Terry for his help day in and day out at the altar. Thank you for your support. <laughs> A final little note of invitation. Um, well, both, first of all, are all those who have been welcomed into church will be out in the narthex. If you want to greet them, formally welcome them to full communion after Mass. In addition to that, um, I am very grateful for um, those who support our parish and help us keep the vision on our parish pastoral council. Sydney, Kirch Sydney Kirchhoff, who is our parish pastoral council chair, who also helped with the foot washing on Holy Thursday. I thank her for that. 
She or Jason right behind her would love to tell you about the Parish Pastoral Council. We're looking for new members starting in the summer, so they'll be glad to tell you more about that. If you're interested, you can come to the, the, the meeting uh, in April. I'm sure there are more things I'm supposed to be mentioning, but read the bulletin. It's all in there. <laughs> May you be blessed in your families at Easter. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Now you know I want a strong amen to each of these. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God.